We are back and talking about pack making again. Last time we covered a very basic getting started resource pack. And this time we're going to talk about a getting started behavior pack using API. I think that API is far easier to work with than the rest of behavior pack making. So we're going to start out with API and then work our way backwards to other things as we go. But API is the new th kid on the block. This is the new thing that Mojang is working on rather than the old Molang based behavior packs, which were pretty difficult to work with. I mean, there's some really cool stuff we did, but they were really difficult. Now, that being said, you are going to have to learn some JavaScript and that might be intimidating for some of you, but it's a very powerful language that it gets used all over the internet and for many, many things. I know there's probably opinions about what language is the best, and that is something that should be summed as the best language is the language that you use to get what you need done. It doesn't matter which language it is. All programming languages have pros and cons. So let's get into how we set up a pack. Again, behavior packs are pretty much just a folder with some files in it and a manifest. That is it. It's just a, a folder with some other folders and files and a manifest and everything else. So what is a behavior pack? A behavior pack is something that modifies the way the game behaves. So what do I mean by that? It can change mob spawning. It can do stuff when mobs die. It can do stuff when blocks are placed or broken. It could do a lot of things but it happens in response to what's going on in the games, not just changing how you see what's going on in the games. Today, what are we gonna do? We're gonna make a behavior pack that lets you check how much lag is on your world. Why am I doing that? Because this is the first behavior pack I wanted to make. The first, last time we did the first texture pack that I made, which was just some block randomizing. Now we're gonna do the first behavior pack I wanted. Now, the first time I made this, it was far worse and it was using Molang and it didn't work very well. But now this version I know gets used everywhere by lots of people. And I've been using it for since game test came out. I think it was the first thing I made in game test, which eventually evolved into API. So let's get into it. Now we got to use our magic string to get to the Minecraft folder again, going to run and run that magic string and it opens up my Minecraft folder. And now I'm going to go into behavior packs. These are my development behavior packs. As you can see, I've I'm in development on a lot of behavior packs, but we're gonna make a new, a new folder. And we're gonna call this MSPT, meaning milliseconds per tick. This is how we measure lag. It's an empty folder. We're going to make a new text document and it's going to be a manifest.json again. It's gonna ask if you wanna change it, and yes, we do wanna change it. So we're going to make a manifest. Again, this is something that is pretty straightforward to put together. I'm going to put the exact one that I used in the description. You can find the link at GitHub. I'm gonna be tracking all of the projects for this series in GitHub in one repo. One repo. So you can check that out if you need any of the code to look at. So this is going to allow us to check milliseconds per tick in game. Now we're gonna get new GUIDs. I showed you this last time, but there's plenty of UUID generators or GUID generators online that you can use. And we're going to change these two. Now the type of pack is going to be a script pack. Why? Because this is it, what we are making. We're going to do a behavior pack using scripts. The language is going to be JavaScript. I don't think there's any other valid language, but you have to put it in. And then we need to put a entry file. We're gonna call this entry file mspt.js for JavaScript. And then we're going to use actually two different uh, libraries that Minecraft provides. We're going to use Minecraft server and Minecraft UI. I'm gonna use the latest version of script, which I have to look up what it was. It's 1.11. Now, I use this website by Sturante and they have packaged the NPM bindings into a viewable JavaScript, uh, a viewable website. 
So this has all of the methods that you can call. This is literally insane how much control you have over Minecraft, and this is just getting started. So it's going to get more and more as time goes on. So first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to go to the world. First thing we're gonna to go to is system, and I'm gonna make a really crappy pack, and we're gonna make it better as we go on. So there is this thing called run interval. You can run it every X number of ticks. So let's save our manifest and we have to make a file in scripts.mspt.js. So let's make a folder scripts. And now we're going to make a new file mspt.js. Yes, I'm going to change it and we will open it in notepad plus plus again very very straightforward and simple next thing we're going to do is we're going to import the libraries that we need we're going to import system from minecraft at minecraft server this is just the syntax for getting the ability to work with the server processes this isn't the world that you're interacting with this is just the server and then we're also going to import the world we may not use that right now but we will use it eventually now the easiest way to get started is we're going to do system.run interval and we're going to run system.run interval and we're going to give it a function which we'll make later and this is going to be mspt and we're going to tell it to run every 10 let's do 20 ticks that's one time a second now we have to make our MSPT function. The way that we do that is we type function and then MSPT, and we're not going to take any arguments. And now this is what we have for code. So every 20 ticks, it's going to call MSPT. We need to store some data. First thing is we're going to, in a variable, that is global, we're going to store the previous execution time. And we're gonna set that equal to date dot now. Now what we're gonna do is every second, we're gonna to print to chat what the current milliseconds per tick is. So what we're going to do is we're gonna use world dot send message. And what we're going to send is MSPT colon and then we're going to add, we're going to do parentheses, date dot now minus previous execution time. And then we're going to set previous execution time to date dot now. Oh, wait, let's go back to Minecraft, save and quit. Let's see if this behavior pack automatically wrote, loaded. MSPT pack, hit add the pack anyway, and hit play. Now you can see... This is actually wrong. We're saying it's a thousand MSPT. This was a mistake. This is supposed to be divided by 20 because we're doing 20 ticks. So now if I save, I go in here and I type slash reload. Now we're getting 46, 50, 49. That's supposed to be 50 MSPT and it looks right around 50 MSPT. That's really, really handy. And you know what? It would be really, really, really annoying too, right? To have chat just constantly spammed with the MSPT with no ability to turn it off. So let's do this differently. Instead of running this on an interval, which would be very annoying. Let's actually make this happen only when I use an MSPT stick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to put a world after event. We're going to do a world after events item used, and then we're going to take an event variable and we're going to feed it into a block of code. And just to make this a little bit easier for you to follow. What we're going to do is call a function that is after item used, and we're going to pass that an event. Now we have to make 
our item use event. So function after item use and event. Going to put a block of code in. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the item name, but I like to do this by saying event. And then as part of the item use event, you get an item stack, which has a type ID and I like to, which is a string. And I like to replace Minecraft with blank just because I don't like to type Minecraft a bazillion times in my code. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if it is a stick, specifically a stick. If it's not a stick, we're going to move on. The next thing we're going to do is get the name of the stick. That is done by item by event item stack name tag. I'm calling it item tag. You could call it whatever you want. Next thing we're going to do is if that stick is named MSPT, we're going to set the previous time to the current time. And then we're going to do system dot run timeout and we're going to run that same mspt function we wrote earlier and we're going to set it to 20 ticks again and now we're going to reload so now if i get a stick and an anvil and i name my stick mspt pull it out and i eat the stick i have a bug in my code and it's not running so what we're going to do what we should, what we're going to do now is actually do some debugging. Debugging is a lot easier in behavior packs than in resource packs. What we're going to do is see if the event is triggering. So we're going to do a console.log event item stack dot type ID. And this is going to log it in, or we're going to do a console.warn, sorry. This will log it in our console log. I know it's kind of weird for us to use console warn instead of console log, but you can see the warning pops up. It says that we are using a stick. Now let's move this down to here and we'll reload and we can use a stick. It still says that we are using a stick. Now let's see what the item name is. Reload again. It still thinks it's a stick, which is good. That means we can go down a line. Let's go down two and see what the item tag is. Item tag is MSP. And that is because I am a fool and named it MSP. And I didn't even look at it. Now it says MSPT and whenever we use it, we get MSPT. See, I didn't actually plan to do the debugging like that. I uh, didn't plan to make a mistake. I planned for it to work, but now let's reload. Now this is working as I intended. I can use this MSPT stick. I can right click and I can actually get the milliseconds per tick whenever I need it. So this is really handy. If you think there's lag on the server, you can right click and actually see if there's lag on the server. Now, one thing, I have made this in the moderation tools pack forever ago. It's a little bit different. It uses the user interface. I'm not going to get into the user interface today because I want to make these very simple, digestible tutorials that you can get started with. And then we'll get more and more complex as we go along. But that way, people that are brand new to programming have something very simple to debug and they don't have to deal with miles of code. This entire behavior pack is under 19 lines of JavaScript. So it's something that a person who's new can probably start to get their head around. I am going to post this to GitHub with all of the comments that you could possibly want and where to find things. So that way you can learn along with me. Anyway, this is Mad Hatter and I'm out. Bye.